Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for another video about the Creality Ender Free 3D Printer. Yes sir. And this video will be significantly uh, shorter, I hope. <laughs> That's the plan. In this video I'll talk about uh, its ability to print flexible materials. And uh, there are a couple of different uh, flexible materials, TPU for instance. Um, important, especially in the RC hobby, this channel of mine, if you are new to this channel, is mostly about radio controlled toys, quadcopters, planes, cars and such. In this hobby we often print, for instance, camera mounts. Here is a camera mount printed in a flexible material, as you can see. And you can uh, slot a camera into it and uh, then strap this entire contraption onto your quadcopter or drone, if you would. So, um, and this, this will then uh, serve to protect your camera and, uh, and hold it all in. So, uh, yeah, in this hobby it is uh, very important, I think. To be able to print flexible materials and therefore can this Ender Free from Creality print flexible materials well and I'm actually printing something as we speak uh, partly uh, to let you hear how noisy the printer is it's not that noisy as you can probably tell you can uh, easily hear what I am saying over uh, what the, 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 the printer's noise, so to speak. Okay, so uh, what I am uh, using, the filament I am here using is a Hobby King filament. Um, it doesn't actually say if it's TPU, I'll have a link in the description to this filament. Uh, it does look very nice, as you can see, this is with that Hobby King filament. And it looks uh, great. I did finish it a little. Disclaimer. More on that in a second. So, yeah, the, the, these mounts, these two mounts, are all printed with the new Ender Free. I'll give you a couple of tips in a few minutes about how I set about printing in this uh, flexible filament. But, Suffice to say that this Ender Free is well capable of printing flexible materials and it, I'm not sure if it's visible, but this is definitely flexible. So that's, that's great and uh, good news I think. Uh, in fact, it's uh, better at, far better actually, at uh, printing flexible materials than the CR10. I had a CR10 uh, prior to this one. And I had a hard time, um, almost to the point of un being unable to print film filaments that are flexible with the CR10. Mainly due to its extruder, the design of the extruder. See, flexible filament, um, if you, that extruder pushes the filament through. If you know about 3D printers, you know that to be true. And the flexible material curls up, has a tendency to curl up before it enters this tube. The Bowden tube is called. It's simply a plastic tube. But uh, well, over, again over here is your extruder which pushes the filament through that tube uh, towards the, the nozzle assembly. So, uh, actually let me uh, zoom in on it a little. Over here you see the extruder, those two metal wheels, the metal one and the brass one. And actually that brass one is the only one that's being driven by the extruder motor, which is over there, that silver and black thing. So, 
Bef uh, from the point of those two rollers to the inlet, inlet, well, to this black piece over here, uh, there is a potential of that flexible filament getting curled up. And again, the design of the extruder assembly of this Ender 3 is uh, different, enhanced, especially for flexible filaments. Therefore, um, I, I'm guessing um, uh, this is successful. Now, if you see reviews of 3D printers in which um, the reviewer instantly has a successful print, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> yeah, if you are new to 3D printing, um, there is a bit of work prior to having a successful print. You have to dial in temperatures, the bed temperature and the nozzle temperature. You have to dial in the speed. You've got a fan over here and over here. Um, that you can adjust the speed of, and I have. So, never do you really uh, start using a new filament. This Hobby King filament was completely new to me. This is the first time I'm using it. There is a bit of a setup work to be done. So, these two prints came out perfectly really there was well perfectly there was a bit of stringing but that's easy to clip off with the supplied side cutter this was my first try and I I am not sure if it'll be visible this here is perfectly fine the last third of the print over here this is too flexible I had myself some um, under extrusion, if you will. Uh, too little filament was used over there. Uh, how did I solve that? I raised the temperature of the nozzle. That's all I did. From this, a failed. Well, yeah, I, this this one is not really usable. This is a failed print. This was my actually really my first print with this material. I raised the nozzle temperature, a presto. And um, yes, this one is finished. I did have me a bit of stringing. Actually, let me show you on the print that's running right now. There, I, I think you can see that there, for instance, over here, there is stringing. Quite a lot, actually. It should be an open surface. So, at this moment I have me some over extrusion. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll have to tweak it a little more. But the major thing here is that the, the extruder uh, assembly and the build plate work well for flexible materials. Which is great news I think. Uh, makes this printer a whole lot more usable. Okay, so much for the review part of printing flexible stuff with the Ender 3, which is a big thumbs up and I'm over the moon with that. Again, for me, in the RC hobby, this is very important. So I'm very happy this works out. So how did I get here, or rather tips on how to print uh, flexible materials. The first thing is your nozzle's temperature. Now, the filament you use should come with specifications on uh, the nozzle temperature. The Hobby King site for this material says uh, 200 degrees Celsius, I think. I'm using a higher temperature, 220 degrees. So that's the first thing I changed from PLA, which I print at 200 degrees, to this flexible material, I had to raise the nozzle's temperature 20 degrees. Again, uh, you might be using uh, a different flexible material. Look up the specifications for that filament to see what uh, the, the ideal nozzle temperature should be. 
The second thing that's important in printing flexible materials is the fan. Uh, once it has laid down a, a, a string, you want to cool it down as quickly as possible with this kind of uh, material. I don't know why, but that's that's what I found. Uh, with PLA, I let the, the the fan that blows onto the material run automatically, whatever that means, at, with this printer. That works. With this flexible material, I uh, run it at 75%. I'm not sure if 100% would be even better, but 75% works. So, that's one uh, important thing for flexible materials. Tip 3. Do not use retraction. I am using a slicer with a free as my slicing software. I'm assuming most slicing programs offer you the option of uh, disabling retraction. Why? Well, this filament is flexible, right? So if that extruder would retract the filament uh, if it has to move the nozzle, uh, that would mess up uh, the material. It would stretch the filament and then try to push it back in. And that's a recipe for disaster with flexible materials. That is also the reason why I have that stringing. Um, ordinarily I'd use retraction to avoid stringing. But well, again with this flexible material I no longer run retraction, hence stringing. Um, now this, the stringing I have here is more than I should have. Again I will uh, dial down the extrusion. The, the amount of plastic it pushes through. I hope that makes sense. Okay, and the last thing, the bed temperature. You might be wondering about that. Uh, do you need a heated bed for uh, a filament printing uh, that's flexible? I don't think so. I'm not running a heated bed at this moment. And it seems to work fine. Also, I'm not uh, printing a, a brim. So a platter to hold your uh, object onto the bed that's connected to the object. Um, would probably be very awkward with uh, flexible filaments as you can't really break, break that uh, uh, brim or raft or whatever it's called. Uh, you can't easily break it off and it doesn't seem to be necessary either. Um, so far this build plate of the Ender 3 works out very well. Uh, both for PLAs and this flexible stuff. Okay, so I know a lot of people were wondering can this printer successfully print flexible materials? And I think this is uh, very good news both for me and for people that are uh, wondering if this is the printer for them. Okay, again a uh, shorter video. And um, yeah, what more can I tell you? This this works and it's uh, a great win for the Ender 3, I think. If you are left with uh, questions about uh, how to print flexible materials or anything else about 3D printing, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.